This is a short video, but I think it is an important topic. This whole video is actually based on a tweet thread made by a political sociologist, Dirk, about the slogan, Women, Life, Freedom, Jin Jian Azadi. And I think Dirk makes a point that is very important, especially now when there are lots of pictures and video emerging of brave women rising up in Iran and Afghanistan. And the point that Dirk makes is that people love to see women resist and struggle against authoritarianism, but want to remain within the boundaries set by the liberal, capitalistic, western-centric nation-state order. That people whom I might actually be a perfect demographic example want to see these pictures but they don't want to hear women's radical ideologies, projects and politics. Just the pictures. And I think this really hits the nail. Why? Of the reasons also mentioned in this thread. I live in Europe and it really is the truth that the liberal European Western majority really loves these images. I know I love these images. And maybe that's just human. But the problem is that at the same time, the nation states in Europe and the whole European Union persecutes these same people and movements. And the slogan Jin Jian Azadi, Women, Life, Freedom, is a good example of this. The slogan has become the main slogan of the ongoing uprising in Iran after killing of a Kurdish woman, Jian Amini. But it originated in 2013 when the secret service of Turkey assassinated three Kurdish women in Paris. Among them Sakine Jansits, one of the co-founders of the Kurdistan Workers' Party with a long history of resistance in spite of Turkish repression and torture by Turkish police. The other two were Fidan Dogan, who worked in the information center where the murder happened, and Leila Söylemes, a young Kurdish activist. The murderer, or the one who pulled the trigger, got caught, but the connections to Turkish secret service were never really addressed thoroughly, and the murderer also died before the trial. No justice was really served. The thing is that the movement these women belong to, the Kurdish women's movement, is heavily criminalized and persecuted. Just think about the pictures of the brave armed women of YPG who defeated ISIS. These pictures are celebrated, but it really is just the pictures, devoted and emptied of the decades of struggle and political ideas and projects for women's self-determination that made the victory over ISIS possible in the first place and creates pathways to better futures in the region with echoes that threaten the Khomeini himself in Iran at the moment. As Dirk points out, Kurdish women have been shouting women, life, freedom in front of French embassies for nine years and have been met with silence. European states deport and spy on women who organize mass protests, festivals and community events under the same slogan. And in some European countries, the flags and symbols of the movement are banned and Kurdish women's mass movement is labeled as nothing but a terrorism while Turkish state currently and historically engaged in genocidal campaign against Kurdish people is allowed to continue its illegal wars and occupations inside Syria and Iraq. So what needs to change? I think Dirik also gives the answer or maybe not the answer, but the direction for discussion that I think especially we, the consumers of revolutionary images, the lovers of non-revolution, need to have. And it is very simple. Solidarity is common struggle. It is not symbolism. So what it takes to dispatch ourselves from the symbolism and move towards the common struggle, this is the discussion we should be having. I really think this is a good question and one that should be applied to other contexts too. Also, let's keep the words Jin, Jian, Asadi in our hearts and remember where they come from, especially now 
when the words have become so inspiring. And that's all. If you watch this far, I'm sorry, but I kind of have to say that you are better off reading the original tweet thread, which I've linked in the descriptions, as I feel it explains this whole idea much better and takes a broader perspective. But I wanted to bring this to your attention as I really think that Derek nailed it on this one. And maybe I being a case example of the very demographic that consumes revolutionary images, I'm able to read some people who need to hear this. It's a discussion that we really should have. Until next time, thanks.